Lay on the Basketball Manitoba podcast, we have Emmanuel Laycock. Emmanuel attended Kildonan East Collegiate up until the 10th grade. He then received an offer to attend Wasash Academy Prep in Utah. As a senior, he averaged 17 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. He was a member of the Canadian National Team Program in the summer of 2016, representing the country at the U-17 FIBA World Championships in Spain. He was selected to the BioSteel All-Canadian Game and then the NBA All-Star Games Basketball Without Borders Camp in 2017. He was a four-star recruit by ESPN and was recruited to play at the University of Arizona, where he played for two seasons. He then transferred to Boise State, where he helped lead the Broncos, the school's first ever Mountain West Conference title, earning a berth to the NCAA March Madness Tournament. This fall, he will be suiting up for the Memphis Tigers in the AAC. Manuel, welcome to the podcast. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. So <laughs> offline with your texting, you're like, man, look, we got to make this, we got to make this quick because I got to go, I got to get into the gym. So you're in, you're in Memphis right now. And you said there's limited gym time and you got to go in there and get some shots up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what's going on with the gym? Is it just, it's just this time of the year, it's just not open to you guys yeah, or are you only allowed a certain amount of time? Like, no, right now, just, um, in the summertime is usually like stuff going on in gyms. You got concerts and all sorts of stuff. You never know who's going to be in the gym, uh, renovations or maybe like floor cleaning. So just I hear you. during different times, it's hard to get in the gym, but it is what it is. Got to make the time. Hey, so, okay. So on that note, we don't have much time. So we we'll just get, get right into this. So I got to start off with kind of on a weird uh, topic here. So we're getting ready for the interview and Adam, says, ask him about chess. And I was like, what about it? And he goes, just ask him about chess. So that's all I'm doing right now. I don't even know. I don't have any context. I'm just asking you about chess. So what, what's going on? What's up with the chess? Chess, that's like my, it was kind of like my first love, to be honest, but basketball kind oh, of for real? Cool. But yeah, um, I went to the King School. It's over on Gateway in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. So I had a fourth grade teacher. His name was Mr. Booth. And um, he had like this belief that chess was math. So like a lot of the time we were we were playing chess in class or like he he take out little segments of the day just to play chess and I just happened to be pretty good at it so then I, I took it pretty seriously um, went to a bunch of tournaments I actually came second in the province oh for real <laughs> yeah uh, lost to a kid named Derek Ma who was, he was <laughs> you still remember his name <laughs> still remember his name playing against him was like it was crazy it was like playing LeBron or something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, do you, so do you still play though? Are you, like, no, you still play. I play. I, I played a couple of days. I play. I play a couple of games a day. Oh, so for real? I play. Like, both. You, are you playing against people? Playing online? Both? Yeah, so I play online. I play bullet. I like playing like one minute games. I, I oh. guess because it kind of um, simulates like a basketball game because you got to make quick decisions in your time. So I just play a couple um, bullet games a day. But yeah, I still play. I've been playing every day since like the fourth grade interesting interesting so is it is this one of those things that like when maybe when you get a little bit more time you're a little bit older you might try to take a little more serious when i'm older that's gonna be like i, th- I think i'm gonna be serious in chess and really serious in golf I think those, <laughs> those are your two things so do you golf as well uh a little pup play every now and then okay okay crazy yeah no you're gonna pick up pick pick it I'm up saying, later i'm gonna pick it up that's like a old man's game yeah, yeah, it is. Well, don't, I don't tell people that golf that they'll be like, yo, you don't know what you're talking about. But it, it is an it is one of those games that you can't play till you're much older. And unlike basketball, like eventually, man, you can't keep landing and and jumping like that. But you could swing. You can swing the, the golf club. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So and so right now. So what what whatever happened to the chess? So like you obviously started taking basketball more seriously. But when did you stop like pursuing chess, I guess? So I stopped uh, doing like the tournaments at. Wasatch actually we won a state championship when I was there oh yeah so, yeah well, so, so you're doing it serious there too like you're on the team yeah I was on the chess team yeah oh but, okay yeah, so it was pretty serious there um once I got into college like I didn't I didn't really explore the the chess rooms but still play it till this day um just toning up my skills for when I retire someday <laughs> you know, you, hey you know what you got to do man you got to find out just like what's going on at Memphis and just like, yo, where's the, where's the check? And just show up and they'll be like, what's going on here? And just start playing. Yeah, That's cool. That's cool. So okay, before we get into your story, I got to ask you also about the pandemic. So I've been asking everyone on, on the, on the podcast, cause we started the podcast, like just pretty much right after things started opening up again. 
but people were playing pro people were playing uh you know uh college in the states and stuff like that kind of you kept like basketball was still happening in canada a lot of the stuff shut down but it was still happening for you so you're away from home like you're playing uh what was it like i mean what were the differences i know obviously there were some limitations uh, some places probably no fans like just talk, tell, tell us a little bit about that um yeah so at first um it was going on for a while and actually for most of that summer we couldn't get in the gym so um for most of that summer it was just really weightlifting, um conditioning stuff of that sort playing like at parks but it wasn't really like basketball like playing in the gym so that was yeah. really weird. but um the pandemic i guess um you had so much time to yourself so you really got to like um explore your weaknesses or something you want to get good at um get in tune with yourself your mm -hmm. your mental health so that was really good for me um but yeah yeah it was it was a good experience i mean did, did you pick up any new like any new habits like did you start new meditating habits. stuff like that Medi like meditating was a good habit i think um stretching um lifting um things of that sort um a lot watching a lot of basketball i mean that's always um, something I've done, but I, I picked it up a lot more and yeah. looking at them was a lot more detail. Um, but yeah, um, overall, it was actually a really good experience. A lot of people, it was rough for them just being confined in the house for so long. But for me, it was actually a really eye opening experience and really helped me with my game, but also with my body. Mm. So where, where were you like during like the, the harsh times of the pandemic? Like where were you in Canada? I was, were you... I was in Idaho. Okay. So the, the really tough part with the pandemic was I couldn't come back to Winnipeg. Yeah. So I haven't been I haven't been back home for like three years because there were still some problems going on. Like maybe a year ago, it was just a little struggle getting back to Winnipeg. So I kind of just been out here, but um, that's probably the toughest part of COVID, just not being able to go back home for so long. So you didn't you didn't go home this summer at all? No, I didn't. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. So you yeah you. So I didn't go back home this summer. Well, actually, I, w I went to Toronto for uh, to okay. get my passport, but um, I, yeah, that was the only reason I came back to Canada just to get my passport because I couldn't fly either. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, it's good. And like, it's, it's interesting because like I've, I've told people uh, like I've had a similar experience th that you had where it's like, yeah, you know what? The pandemic was kind of a good thing. Like, I mean, there, I know there was a lot of negative things happening, but, you know, sometimes when when there's a lot of negative things, you could find some positive things. And for me. Like same as you, man. Like I had a lot of moments, and but unfortunately, some people didn't. Some people it was it was rough for them. So it's good to hear that you kind of you kind of grew a little bit. You know, you had some you added to your to yourself versus just sitting there like stressed out, which is, is always good to hear. Yeah. So okay, we got all that out of the way. Now I want to start way way back in the beginning, man. Like you said, you haven't been to Canada in a long time. Yeah, well, like you went to get your passport. But you haven't been home in a long time, but you you came up in the basketball world. In Winnipeg, um, we, I mentioned briefly you played at KE, but I want to go even further back. What, what are some of your first memories of basketball? Like when when did you start playing? <laughs> Where did you start playing? Who did you start playing with? Who were your coaches? Take us to the beginning. So the beginning. So I basically started playing basketball because I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, my cousin's actually Lou Dang who played for the Chicago Bulls. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I always, I always had someone to look up to in terms of, like, what, what I wanted to be, someone kind of looked like me. So I always knew, like, it was a possibility. I didn't know I was going to be this tall. But yeah. <laughs> I knew my, in my family who made the NBA, played D1 basketball, so I knew I could do it. So that's where it first started. I always played in the park. I was a big 2K player, so I would play 2K and then practice some moves. I learned. Big Ballers Light fan um, and one mixtapes. Um, watch those, practice those. So that's uh, basically where it started. Competitively, it started. I was actually at the YMCA and um, Chad Postumus. Yeah. Father, I think his name is Charlie. Yeah, Charlie yeah, Postumus. yeah. So he uh, he coached the team East St. Paul Community Club. So I was at the YMCA and he saw me. I was tall, just playing around. And he came and he, he thought I had some talent, asked me to join his team. So then I played. <laughs> East St. Paul, I decided, like, I wanted to play so bad. My first game was against Mayhem, against Daniel Sackey. <laughs> I saw how good he was, and then everyone was talking about him. Oh, he's so good, this. And I kind of wanted that feeling. 
as a basketball player. So that's really when I started taking it seriously. And then I ended up winning Mayhem because I knew like they had a, a really good program, really good coach, and then also Daniel there. So I could learn. Yeah, yeah. How, how old were you around that time? Like when, like 12, 13, 10? 11, 12. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so you, you really didn't play organized basketball until then? Yeah, until then. Didn't play okay. Game. Okay. Because, and, and you and you and obviously Daniel are, are boys, right? You guys are. That's fine. Right, yeah. 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 We're, I'm, actually, I'm set to interview him soon as well. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that as well. But that's, that's interesting. So I didn't know you, you, you guys knew each other from way back then. Yeah. Way back then. Yeah. That's interesting. So, okay. So Charlie introduces you to the game. Hey, come out, come out and play. You end up on Mayhem. So then who were some of those like mentors? I mean, again, obviously you can move, you know, keep, keep taking us through the story. Like, obviously, you know, you, you start playing, you have a coach at Mayhem. Eventually, maybe you go to other programs. But who are some of those mentors that like made it serious for you? Because at some point, you know, you grow up a little bit and then it becomes like real serious. You know, you're good at it. That's one point. But then at some point you're like, yo, actually, this is like this is real. This is what I do is who I am. When did that start to happen? And who were some of those mentors? Um, I had a lot of mentors. I say um, probably the person who made the biggest impact on my career was probably Alex Barra. Mm. Because I remember a lot of coaches they saw my height at such a young age and they wanted to stick me in the post mm. and Alex was like you're not going to be seven feet uh we're, we're going to give you guard skills so I played the guard I played the point guard shooting guard he let me shoot handle so he kind of gave me the vision of you know being a guard even though I was so tall and then that benefited me more than anything getting older because being six eight like that's not even then, that's not that huge in, in basketball. So it's important mm-hmm. to have hard skills and being able to shoot. So I got to give that to Alex for sure. Another big mentor of mine was uh, Coach Chit with the Wolves. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was really good. He uh, he kind of showcased me more to, like, the American side of basketball, um, going across the border and um, going to tournaments in Minneapolis and Kansas against top AAU teams, getting seen out there. I think playing for Wolves is when I got my first, like, interest from D1 team. So, mm. um, Coach Jay really showed me to, like, a higher level of basketball, I would say. And then um, Mike Page, Padona Nice. I mean, I think Mike – I just got better guarding him in practice. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can I, see how you would. I, I tell people to this day, like, one of the best players I ever played against is Mike Page. Yeah. Like, he's different. So, yep. I picked up a lot of stuff from him, like – Every, every time I guarded him, I just pick up moves, pick up moves. So the way I play is kind of like Mike, just because I went against him in practice, just guarding him in practice. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's really influential for me, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, say, you just name dropped a whole, a whole bunch of people. And all of, the, all of those people there, like, have affected a lot of people. Like, they're, they're all influential in their own right. And um, yeah. it's interesting. I remember seeing when you, when you were young, um, and I was like, who is this kid, man? Because, like, I saw you a lot at KE as well, but then obviously with Mayhem a little bit as well. And, like, um, it was the cool thing. The thing that I that I like about everything you said is that those those people really saw, like, the potential in you. And they didn't just say, hey, we, we, we're trying to, like, we're just going to try to win, right? They're like, yo, we're going to let this guy play and develop. And, you know, we, we're going to try to win some games too, but we're going to try to develop this guy. And I think that's super important, man. And, like, so shout, mm-hmm. shout, out, to, shout out to those coaches. So now you – Dan Becker, also. Dan Shout Becker, up. huge. He's another one I left out. He um, introduced me to T Manitoba. Yep. Um, just his his, uh, his input. Um, he did the um, Team Canada training stuff, and he did a lot of stuff with your body movement. So um, Dan Becker for sure. Yep. Shout out, man. It's it, 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 to say you've had some good you've had some good coaches in your life. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you had some good coaches, man. That's a nice nice group of coaches. So you talked about uh, the Wolves a bit. You talked about, uh, you know, going down to the States, getting that exposure. So tell us a little bit about, you know, you you played up until the, the 10th grade. Um, you're at, at, you, you were playing varsity, though, in the 10th grade, were you not? I was playing varsity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you were in the 10th grade. So mm-hmm. then you, you end up going to the States. And so what was that like? Like, how did that even come about? Like, tell us about, did they recruit you? Was it from one of these Wolves trips? Can you t- t- walk us through that? <laughs> So, um, actually, when I was in 10th grade, I was uh, starting to play for Canada Elite, which was an uh, under uh, school. Yes, yes. Team. So, I was still in Winnipeg, uh, Winnipeg playing AU. Um, and then, I was, honestly, I did pretty well. 
um, I got seen by a bunch of schools. So then just had a little process of deciding what school to choose. I decided to go to Wasatch. Um, I had a couple of teammates from my AU team that went there. So just easy transition. Um, and from there, um, it was just good from there. Yeah, yeah. Because then that, now, you're in, now you're in the whole American system. Like that's a whole other beast. What's um yeah. what, what Wasatch is in uh is whereabouts Utah. again? Utah. In Utah. Somewhere in Utah. <laughs> it's a small town. Is the town Utah. called Wasatch? Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Okay, Mount okay, okay. And 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 how and you were there for how many years? I was there for two years. Okay. So yeah. so why like besides your teammates are there, obviously, you know, you have connections. Were there other schools that were like, hey, come out here and we want you to 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 play for us? Yeah, there were a lot of schools for sure. I mean, um, a lot of those teams down south, I mean, they just look at your size and athleticism. doesn't matter. So they are pretty impressed with that. And I, got, I had a lot of schools, but I think Wasatch has presented, um, you know, the best um, scene um, where I can showcase against, you know, top teams. And then also just having my teammates there from AAU just mm-hmm. kind of like comfort them. Well, it's tough, too, because, like, you're playing that game where you're like, okay, I got to find somewhere that is going to allow, like you said, allow you to showcase because, you know, it's, just, it's again, the American system is completely different, right? And so, like, you need to be able to showcase yourself, but, like, you can't go to an absolute crap place. It has to be the right quality, and then you got to be a place that actually wants to, like, showcase you and play you a lot. So I, I, that's why I, I asked, and, like, it must have been kind of like, you know, you're like, okay, you're looking around, you're like, you know, I got to go somewhere that, that makes sense for, for you as a mm. player. Right. And so, um, okay. So you played two years there. Um, do you, how, how did you guys do on a, on a team level? Um, so actually, uh, the two years that we were there, we made the Dick sporting, uh, national tournament. Okay. So the national, the, the best tournament you could play for in high school, we, we made it twice. Lost in the first round both years, but I think it was just pretty special. It's like it's like making the NCAA tournament almost. So um, okay. we were really successful my two years there for sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't know much about the prep world like in that detail. So like I don't <laughs> I've never heard of that tournament before. But so then so that that that's like a big deal if you make that term. Yeah, that's like only eight teams go out of how many schools? So oh, for it's just an eight team tournament. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. See that <laughs> because you're like yo, it's like making it in the, the March Madness tournament. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, it's yeah. probably like you know, 30 some teams, eight teams no, like, like making the lead. Eight, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. So then, okay. So this is, this is kind of what I really wanted to hear about. So like, yeah, okay. Wasatch, that's fine. But like, you obviously had a, had a solid career there and like, I mean, back home, like we're all kind of watching, right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you obviously <laughs> end up being like a pretty high, like as far as a recruit, you're pretty high, uh, high level recruit when it comes to your rating and all that, you end up going to play at Arizona. Um, but there must have been like a bunch of other schools that wanted you to play for them. So tell us the schools that you remember. I mean, again, you may not remember them all. Um, and then can you tell us why you ended up going to Arizona. All right. So my top four schools, I had a lot of schools. I mean, I can't even. So my top <laughs> four um, was Oregon, Louisville, Utah, and Arizona. Okay. Okay. And it really ended up coming down to Utah and Arizona. So Utah, was just I was already – living in the state. So I was around there a lot. I need the coaching staff really well. So that's why I decided to put him in like the top two. And then Arizona was just national powerhouse program. So yeah. Yeah. I mean when I went and visited there, it was kind of like a no-brainer kind of situation. <laughs> so they, when they bring you out though and they show you the campus and stuff, you're like, come on, man. Like I watched I, I so I watched them play UCLA. They had Lonzo, everything. They actually lost that game, but like the yeah. atmosphere Coming from Winnipeg, I was like, this is different. I've never seen nothing like this. Like, this is what I want to be in. So that's kind of why I went to Arizona. We had a really good recruiting class. Um, a lot of good uh, older players returning. So I thought it was a pretty good situation. Yeah. No, that's – that's uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, like I said, it's just different down there, man. I don't know what else to say. Like, it's just – it's different. Yeah. Is different. Like the facilities must just themselves, like the locker room, the weight room, all that must have just been been crazy. I mean, from pay, like I tell people all the time, it's di- like even to this day, like people like some people take it for granted. I'm I, every day I go into these locker rooms, I'm like, this is just different. So, you appreciate it, right? Exactly. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, you must have some teammates that are just like, ah, whatever. You know? Yeah, it's like normal to them. You know, it's like they're yeah. normal. 
to me it's like to this day it's like this is different yeah yeah no that's yeah that's crazy i remember like i've been into some facilities before just like the tour and stuff like that or like they look around and yeah it's i mean i don't know what else to say it's like a professional like depending on the school of course like obviously university of arizona is like it's like a it's like the pros like you go you can go to europe and some of the best teams and their facilities aren't even close to that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so you end up choosing Arizona. Was it? But like you said, it was it more so just because of like obviously the 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 school itself. Obviously, it's it's the University of Arizona. You go to you go do a visit. But did you go visit any of the other schools before you made that decision? Yeah, I visited um Utah. So those are my only. Oh, you just, you just visited those two? How come? How come you? The unofficials. Okay. So okay. Yeah. So how come you didn't visit? Uh, you said Oregon and what was the other two? Louisville. And why did you? Why did you go? Um, I think for me, just I, I figured that I wasn't going to go there. They got some recruits that I just thought it wouldn't. It didn't really make sense. And then, um, yeah, from from the like me personally. As a recruit, I'm, I'm not big on, like, wasting people's time and money. So I just, like, didn't even bother knowing I wasn't going to go there. True, true. Well, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. So, okay, I got to kind of skip ahead here because you guys just had uh, – I mean, it's it's weird to say. I think that was just this last year. Seems like – I don't know why. It was a super long time ago. A couple months but, ago. Right? It's, but it doesn't seem like it was a long time ago. Yeah, it feels like it was <laughs> – years ago <laughs> so talk yeah. about that run man like that was crazy like we were watching everyone was watching man like that must have just been just so exciting <laughs> like yeah like for me that was probably the most fun i ever had playing basketball just because of the story behind it all i mean i had teammates abu Jeff from canada he went to oregon his career didn't really work out there kind of like mine did in arizona another teammate marcus shaver he played it on like a losing team so he didn't really get to showcase himself as much we had a lot of hungry freshmen juco guys so we were all like we had a chip on our shoulder from the summer and the previous year you know we had all the hype and we weren't that good everyone was kind of writing us out and then just being able to like unify um all the hardships he went through fights and practice <laughs> just going at each other and going on to win a Mountain West championship when no one thinks you can do it. I mean, it was just special, especially to do it with the group of guys we had. Yeah. So, yeah, that was probably the most fun I ever had. So, then, so in that in that entire run, was winning the the, the conference championship the like the, the pinnacle of that, like the most exciting moment? Or were there other moments, like when you're like your first round in the tournament, like what's the, what stands out from that, from that year? I think like, the championship game for me, at least, it was super fun, of course, but it was like a, it was like a we did it kind of moment because mm. I remember like, we had, we were really playing like five, six dudes, thirty minutes a game, every game. So like that championship game, we're all dead. Like, I remember looking at a boo during the game and we we're like, yo, we got thirty more minutes. <laughs> like, it was, I think just like the resilience we had, like the fight, because like all of us, like at that point of the year, every team, like you're banged up knees hurting like yep. it's, it's all about heart at that point so i just think we had more heart than everybody in the show i mean the interactions we had during during that game was something i remember even more than just like winning the championship yeah yeah let's go let's go let's go so i just stay just staying focused on that on that on that task and then the, but just yeah, coming through it's like like the person next to you got to be able to be like let's go like pick you up so like we really did that that game because we were all dead. Like every possession was war. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that. That's that. That's that full full out team team effort, huh? Yeah. 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 You know. You know. It reminds me of when you're saying that kind of stuff. It reminds me of what people. Um, now I've never served in the military, but people who have served, they went and they go to battle. They have. They talk about this where it's like you look to the person next to you and you're like, yo, like we got to get this done. Like we don't have any other options here. And then you and they always say like. Those are some of the fondest memories they've ever had. And it's because like you, when you come together with a bunch of other people to like accomplish a task. And like you said, you're tired, you're sore. It doesn't matter. You're like, yo, we have to do this. Like I, we have another option and yeah. you come through on the other end. Like, come on. It's crazy. You say that. Cause a day before the game, our coach actually showed us this video. It was like a military video of uh, this dude. He was like picking up injured uh, soldiers 
and he was tired and he was just like, Lord, give me one more, one more, one more. So like every possession we would look at each other and be like, one more. <laughs> like, so that's kind of funny, uh, the military reference, because that's literally what we watched. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, back, basketball is a, a microcosm of life. And like sometimes it replicates things like that. You know what I mean? Where it's like you, you, you just got to pull through. And, 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 you, and you said it. You said it. You're like, yo, it, we had to. It's like we, we, we just had to fight harder. Like, yeah. and at that, it was like you said it. You said it, it's like a war and yeah. it was a battle. You know, you're using all these words. But at some point, like in its simplest form, basketball is just about making shots. Right. Yeah. But when you start to dissect it, it becomes so much more. Right. It because it, it's all exactly. 95%. Well, maybe it's not that much, but I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't just say though. Where when everything's equal, it's mental. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all mental, right? Like everyone is athletic, is this, their skill, the skill level is the same. It's all mental at that point, right? Because there's no level of athleticism that's gonna make you do something more than the other person can't do. Mm. So it's about fighting. But yeah, I know that that's 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 crazy. So then after that, um you guys obviously you win, you go to the tournament. Um, what, what was the tourney like? The tourney, I mean, it was rough. I think if we could have stayed healthier as a team, I think we could have made a really big run. I think yeah. uh, running into Memphis, I mean, they were super athletic, fast. Us being all you know, kind of sore, tired, sprained ankles here or there. We had a dude playing with the torn meniscus. Damn. So it was just like we fought hard, but I think they just had – they had like 10 – there were 10 strong. Just, <laughs> just throwing, throwing guys at you. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I, we had a good fight. I mean, I think it was like a minute or two to go. We were down like five. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, back. like just that experience itself, man. I'm, like, again, obviously the conference title stands out. But, I mean, you know, like like you said before with the the the, the JUCO thing, right, or the, the prep thing, like, you, like not everyone goes to the tournament, man. Like there's so many schools, mm. you know. And the fact is you have to win, a, win your, your league to get there. I mean, that's an accomplishment in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was actually my second time playing the tournament, so it was Look, like, yeah. Both times it's like both times are really special. I think I think this time around, just being there before, I didn't have like the jitters as much, but it was it's still obviously a special moment. But I mean, with the experience, I mean, like I could tell why, um, like champions Curry and all of them, they could go into the finals just comfort comfortably because they've been there before. So mm-hmm. I think. This upcoming season, hopefully I get there, I think it'll be a lot more comfy too, just being there two times already. Yeah, and it, it makes a difference, right? Like you said, when you experience something, you're like, okay, I get it. You know, yeah. for, like you said, first time you're like, all right, like what's this all about? You know, you don't know what to expect. But yeah. that's cool. That's cool. I, I, this is pure curiosity question at this point. What What is it like um, behind the scenes? So, like, do you have the, some of the same teams staying at the same hotels? Like, are you seeing your rivals in the – in the lobby at the hotel, they what's just talk about that a little bit. Like, yeah, it's, you're, you're gonna run into dudes for sure. You're gonna run into teams in your hotel. That's almost a given at those type of tournaments. Yeah, so yeah. Just run into a lot of fans, just trying to get autographs or trying to get some out of you reporters. So I think a lot of those tournaments just about staying focused, kind of staying to yourself and your teammates and not, you know, getting too caught up in the outside noise mm-hmm. really affect the game for sure. So then what are some of your strategies for that? I mean, on a day-to-day basis, you know, again, like you're a young man out of college. I would imagine like at some point you're somewhat of a celebrity in, in, in that world. Um, like how do you stay focused on the task? You know, like what was talk us through that process of like a day-to-day, like you have a game at the end of the day, let's say it's a home game. I mean, how do you stay grounded? Um, I think it's just, you know, having a routine, you know, something you do. Like for me, I like um, watching film early, night before on the team I'm playing, even days before that, but like really diving into it night before, early in the morning on my matchups, the offense. So I do that. You all you have your team shoot around, um, then get your body warmed up, go home, just relax, literally, and then go to the game. No, no, ch- no chess? No chess before the game. <laughs> no? Nah. I thought that might lock you in a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Usually usually it's just like I try to chill, like play video games, yeah. like not focus too much on the game because like 
Like if you it, like the outside noise, like stuff like that, you could go into these games and act like it's like life or death or something. Like just yeah. Basketball. So I think just just trying to keep it just basketball opposed to like making this such a big deal. So, so do you, do you make a point to stay off of like social media or like not watch any news or see because like I mean again your teams are being covered locally. You might be scrolling or see something and you're like yo, and then they're talking. Do you try to just avoid all that? See that stuff is not. That stuff doesn't affect me anymore. I think it just comes with experience. Like mm-hmm. when I went to Arizona, my, my Arizona, my first year, even my second year, a little bit, like you're so caught up on what other people think, you know, those fan bases, people talking trash. Mm-hmm. So you, know, you always want to prove them wrong and stuff, but then you're just not focusing on the game yourself. You're letting people have power over you. So I think just over the years, I just learned to not really focus on that stuff. And honestly, just not even care about it, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. That's the point where I'm like, it doesn't even matter. So the news and stuff, um, that stuff I could look at doesn't really matter to me. It's more about the um, the interactions you have with people. Because you can run into someone and they could be like, oh, you coach this or y'all do this, this. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you're not in our locker room. You don't know what's yeah. going on. I'm like, I don't want to hear it, especially before a game. So I think it's just like minimizing like the interactions I have with people who aren't like on the team. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, you probably get a lot of that. You go out like just to go eat somewhere and then someone's like, oh, yeah, I saw your game or some. That must be annoying, man. That, that'd be tough. That'd be tough. And you're like, all right, cool. Because you don't want to be rude. You're like, all right, yeah, yeah. Like respect, yeah. but I, <laughs> I got to go. It's just uh, crazy how much like you run into people who have like negative things to say. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a lot of the times going to be negative, especially like the high, like when your your team is doing well, it's like, that's probably when you hear the most negative stuff. Really? Yeah. When, when, when things are going their best, people are, are like the most negative. Yeah. Cause like if things are going well, but maybe you didn't score once this game, they'll be like, why didn't coach do this for you? Yeah. 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 It's like that stuff. And you start to like, listen to that. That's like coach rice that boys used to call drinking the poison. It's like, mm. You know, like you're it's just like toxic stuff being thrown at you. And you're just consuming it instead of just being like, nah, it's not. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's interesting. I totally get that. Um, I want to talk about the offseason a little bit. We talked about a little bit like how you prepare for games. But like, what does an offseason look like for you? Um, are you just jumping into like, hey, I need to rest for like two weeks? Are you jumping straight back into it? Uh, what's your mindset in the offseason? How often are you training? Yeah, so um, this offseason was really really different because I did the NBA pre-draft stuff. So that was different because, like, it's, like, right after you're done with the college season, you're, like, it's, like, almost jumping into another season because you're competing against a lot of dudes, training every day. So that's pretty um, gruesome on your body a little bit, too. But Where was that? Where did they do that? I was in Miami. There, there's okay. a lot of different locations, yeah, but I was in Miami. So okay. I spent – um couple months in Miami, um, doing my pre-draft, um, training a lot, working on my leg strength, um, shooting, uh, really adjusting to the NBA range, um, just watching a lot of film, working on basically all facets of my game. So, Wait, so the- let me ask you a little question, a few questions about that. So the pre- those, those pre-draft camps, um, you say you're working on like your body and you're shooting all that. Like, are you working with someone that you like you brought in? Are these like people who are like who you who's 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 doing the shooting with you? Where are you working? Like, talk talk about some of that. Yeah, so um, the agency I was doing my pre-draft with, they bring in their, um, you know, their own NBA trainers. They have their own strength dudes. So you're kind of on their schedule, trusting, you know, what they, you know, put to the table for you. So that's what. um I was doing Miami training with NBA trainers. They're really good, really good strength trainers. So it was a really good experience. Nice. And the same, is that like same with the skill, skill coaches as well, or is that on your own? Yeah. Yeah. So the skills, the skills training is um, NBA guys, NBA trainers, um, really teaching you like the terminology. The sets are a lot different. Like I tell people all the time, like the NBA game and the college game is like two different things. Like, just because you're good in college doesn't mean you're going to be good in the NBA. It's, like, a whole different game. So, just adjusting to that and the way the game is played. You got to adjust to that NBA three-point line. Mm. Um, speed of the game, 24-second shot clock. So, just a lot of uh, learning and 
Um, just fine tuning stuff, getting your shot right. But overall, it was a good experience. So did, were you running or training with any guys that uh, got drafted this last year? Like, yeah, which- yeah I, um, I think it was three guys. Um, Josh Minot, um, Jalen Williams, and then Musa Diabate. So three okay. guys. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so obviously the, 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 the question is, is, you know, after you – I mean, you still have a whole year, but, I mean, you obviously went to a, a pre-draft camp. I mean, you obviously are going to go on and play pro is, is probably the goal here, right? Um, NBA is obviously the goal, I'm assuming. Yeah, for sure. So after this after this year, what does it look like? You get an agent? Like, how, what's that process like? Yeah, so after this – after the season – uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work out with, the, like, the agency stuff, but I'm going to have to do a pre-draft. I'm going to have to work out for a bunch of teams. So I think just one thing I learned from the pre-draft from last year is just um, preparing for it during your season. Mm. Um, during the season, I'm going to be shooting. Even this offseason, there's a lot of NBA threes, preparing myself for that, getting myself in great shape and just things of that sort, um, being familiar with the NBA terminology just so this time next year. You know, I'll be a lot more prepared. Mm-hmm. Sure. You want to step step in ready. So, yeah. so, but do you have to, um, like, when do you have to have an agent versus, like, do you even have to, to do all the pre-draft stuff? Like, like when you're all done, like, hey, Memphis, if the season's over, do you have to hire an agent? Or, like, what's, do you know? I don't think you have to. I mean, I guess it's just the norm. I mean, most, most players do mm-hmm. do that, but. I don't think you have to. A lot of people go different routes. A lot of people might do their own thing. They might mm-hmm. have their trainers ready. So I think it just depends on um, how you want to go about your process. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, what What's some, so you had mentioned, like you said, Luol Dang's your cousin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. where, so I know, <laughs> I know you Luol Dang played for Great Britain's national team at some point. I'm almost, I'm almost positive, right? He played for England at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, so the outside of Canada <laughs> this is a question outside of Canada. What kind of connections do you have to what countries where and that potentially, obviously, you might want to play for Canada's national team at some point. But then what other opportunities could you have to go play at other national teams? So, again, see, so where's your family from and what connections do you have? And have you thought about that at all? Yeah, so my, my family comes from South Sudanese heritage. Um, so I could play on the South Sudanese national team. Um, actually really, really could be a possibility. Really looking real? at, at some point, like, probably gonna, gonna try to play for the South Sudanese national team. So, um, that's definitely something I, I'm planning to do. Nice. But, nice. Cause I would imagine like, there's probably a bunch of, bunch of you guys who could, could roll up and play, right? Like you have a good team. South Sudanese, <laughs> yeah. South Sudan got, we got a lot of dudes, Yeah, a lot of talent. So if everyone just decides like, we, we're going to go out there and play. I think we have a really, really good team. So do you have any desire to play for the Canadian national team? I have a desire to play for the Canadian national team, Canadian national team for sure. Um, I think it's just a part of me, just like playing for my heritage, where my parents grew up, just that's something that's special to me. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I have a desire to play for both, represent mm-hmm. both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, I know obviously, uh, like, Keith, Keith O'Mara, like, you know, he played with – playing with Nigeria there. Um, and I know a lot of players like that's, that's, I mean, that's, it's not uncommon. Right. And you hear about that kind of stuff, it, it being like special. Yeah. You know, it's special to do that. And especially mm-hmm. to go back and represent. So, I mean, obviously uh, like, you know, Hey, we'd love to see you play on, on Canada's national team, but wouldn't it be something to go and play for South Sudan and make like a, a serious run? Like that'd be yeah. special. That'd be special for sure. That'd be yeah. crazy. And like, and represent, you know, like, yeah that's cool um all right so we're gonna wrap up real quick man um i got three three more questions for you uh before before i let you get back into uh uh get get, get you out to the gym because i know you gotta run go 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 get those uh nba 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 threes in um yeah. all right so first question is we may have talked about it already but if we have just you know if, it's, if, if I ask you the question and we and you already covered it, just whatever. Tell us more about it. But first question is your most memorable basketball moment, story, season, just your most memorable uh, uh, story connected to basketball. My most memorable one has to be winning the Mountain West Championship. 
And, you know, being ranked 23rd in the country and playing a major role in that, I think, like, that's something special to me. Um, I would say another really special moment for me was, honestly, I have a lot, just a lot of team stuff. Personally, I would say was making Team Canada Mm. first time because I remember my first year I tried out, I actually got cut. And that's when I was like, I think I got a lot better then because I was, I went to camp and going against like dudes like RJ and Simi. It was just different for me being from Winnipeg, honestly, because there is a little talent gap, to be honest. Yeah. So yep. just going there, I, I guess it showed me high level basketball in a sense, even though mm-hmm. we were so young, just like for that age group, what high level basketball was. So I think after that camp, I got a lot better because I think mm-hmm. I already skills but it's just like learning the game so um then the next year going on and actually making the team and yeah. Danny the team as well I think it's just special like especially all the dudes from Winnipeg who made the team with James Wagner Ben Miller I mean being from Winnipeg like that stuff doesn't happen a lot so no it's special for sure for sure yeah. all right so again you may not have anything but I swear, sometimes I ask people this question, they have like a million stories and some people are like, I don't know. So your funniest basketball moment story, I don't know, something. It could be, it, and I always say this, it could be something that happened in like a locker room. It doesn't have to be like in the game. It could just be anything. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably, I have a lot. One story <laughs> I would give you is this, this season we were playing against uh, the University of Nevada and we were at Nevada and I always play good against Nevada, but at, we were at Nevada, and, like, when I get going, I'm a big trash talker. I don't know if a lot of people know that. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't expect that. So I think it was just funny, like, just to, I was talking trash to everybody, but I was killing. So it was like, like, I knew it was really hurting. Like, it was hurting, though, when I was talking trash. And after the game, like, we got a little altercation. All my teammates were in it. So to me, that was just funny. Like, Oh, you got, it, it actually turned physical? Like, they wanted to go at you? Like they, they they wanted to. It, it didn't. The Nevada guys were people, upset. Yeah, they, they they were upset though. Like during the layup lines, they got a little chippy. And to <laughs> me, it was just funny because like I'm not really taking this seriously. Like I'm just I just talk trash is what I do. Like so yeah, that was just kind of funny. Okay, nice, nice, uh, nice. Real like that was probably like in my college experience. Like in high school, I used to do it all the time, but like in in college, that was like the first time I felt like I really like like hurt a team's soul. <laughs> <laughs> like you got you seriously got the best of them like you got yeah, best of that yeah like after that game they were like they were thinking about how like I, like what i did to them in that game for sure yeah 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 i love that i love that that's those, those are always good moments man because like you said remember the game is mental and you got them like mentally you, yeah. you, you mentally you really i got, got them. Them. me that's yeah. just funny because like when you see them all like <laughs> rattled and i'm just out there just laughing like <laughs> um all right last question here um i mean you had you've had quite a journey man like so you know you've obviously you're in canada you know you leave canada you go to utah you go play play uh um played a um, prep school uh you've played at a couple uh nc2a schools you played for the national team right like you've done the bio you kind of you've done a lot man in a short time because you're 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 a young man um but in all those experiences, uh, you've learned a lot, right? Like you just said before, you're like, hey, like w- when I was doing this, I used to think about what people thought. Now I don't, I don't care about that, right? So in all that time, you, you, you've, you still have a lot of growing to do. And in 10 years, you're going to have all this new, uh, you know, retrospect on all this stuff you've done up to that point. But for, up to this point, you could still give a lot of people advice. So now imagine you're, you're, you're standing in front of a room of, you know, 12-year-olds when you started playing, got, you know, k- club kids in Manitoba. And they're like, man, you know, Mando, he's playing. I see him on, I saw him on TV. I, like, I want to be there too. What piece of advice would you give those, those young kids that are looking up to you and they kind of want to go down that path that you've been down? Um, for like, if I was to say something to like a group of kids in Manitoba, I would say one is just believing in yourself. Like go, you have to be able to go anywhere. Like a lot of, I remember in Winnipeg was always like this little myth, like American players are so good. Like if you go down here and I think one reason I was really good is just naturally, I think it was just like 
in me is like I didn't really care. Mm. But like I, it doesn't matter who I play, like I'm going out like I'm gonna see if you're good. And I think like me and Saki really had that a little bit. So I think it's just like believing in yourself no matter the situation. That's one. And then two is like just not caring what people think about you. Because mm. the higher level you go, it just seems like this from personal experience is like the stakes almost seem like it's more when it's just when it's not it's something you've been doing like your whole life or something that you love to do. So I think it's just like playing the game for the love of it and not for what other people think. Mm. And then being able to like not like be in the flow state when you're playing. Because a lot of the time it's like you can miss a shot or something bad happens. You just start thinking and that could just ruin a game for you right there. Mm -hmm. And then the margin for error, the higher level you go is so slim. So I think it's just being able to like, you miss a shot, who cares? I'm on defense. Or I just got to turn over a run back. You know, like a lot of coaches preach that stuff, but like that stuff's serious. So like, you got to be able to just be in flow state, not thinking, just go out there and do what you do. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, I look forward to uh, talking to you in about five years, man. You seem like a, a someone who's, you know, you're, you're pretty, you seem pretty aware, right? And so I can imagine where you're going to be in All five right. years from now. And I love that though, because you know what, like you don't, not everyone, pe even, even people who have success aren't necessarily like a kind of have a sense of self-awareness. So I can see that in you. You, you, you're still a young member. You, you, you bring a certain level of, uh, um, of knowledge that I respect. And so I'm excited to see where you're going to be in five years. Um, maybe I'll get to interview you again. And you, and you know what, you, you're, 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 you're trying to make a run with South Sudan to the, the Olympics or something, man. That would, and that, that would be something. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let you run. I know you got to get to this gym before it closes. You got about 15, I don't know, 15 minutes. I hope it's not far. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, sure take care. Hey, good luck this year. Yeah, appreciate we're, it. We're, we're going to be watching back home. All right, for sure. Yep, yeah, appreciate All right. it. Okay, peace. Take care. Have a good one. All right. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share this series, and reach out to us with your comments on the show. Thanks again for joining us.